time to saturate these and do a little bit of an exposure change on them. So that's the end result. Now, I haven't done any other retouching, and we'll, we'll come into that. But if we look at this, this series of photos here, you'll see that we've got this branch of, of it's funny, I said series of photos, and my phone woke up. Uh, what are these called? These little, um, I know what these flowers are. They, what are these? they really smell really nice. What? Okay, just forgive me. I'm not a a botanist, obviously. Uh, so we get these pretty flowers here, and they're nicely in focus all up here, tiny, tiny little things, and this branch is in focus, that branch is in focus. But look at that branch back there, totally, totally out of focus. Okay, well, that setup, I was going to take a picture of the side of it, and then I forgot to, sorry. But I just shot this today, and essentially I've got two little groups of these flowers that are, let's call it, five or six inches apart from each other. And the first group has branches kind of coming towards the camera and saw it to the sides and the one behind it, it's not that far back. It's got other ones on it. And then one of the back ones to be totally out of focus and the front ones to be in focus. And so this stack comprises, is comprised of that. So let's take a look at, uh, at the original images actually, let's do it this way. So let me close this and open focus merge flowers. Here we go. And okay, oh, this is the back. Uh, oh, that's because I'm not at the top. There we go. Let's try this again. Okay, so here's here's the beginning. And actually, the first actually in focus one is probably there. And so you can see there how little, how little is in focus. Just nothing, just the tip of that thing. And as I go through these, we'll just I'm gonna skip down a few. You can see there it's starting to draw in focus. Oh, look, there's a hair. Lovely. Uh, go a few more. And just here, you can see how many down I'm skipping. Let me move this over to the side, move this here, pull this down so you can see. There we go. Okay, back to this. So if I go down a few more, you can see how that's going back, going back, going back. We get to the kind of middle row of flowers in there. So there's those in focus. Now look, the foreground's completely, completely blown out. Here we're in kind of a middle ground. There's nothing in focus. And as we get far enough back, we'll get to the background of flowers. The back one's in focus. And so remember, I said I wanted to do this where I had that first collection of flowers in focus, the back one's not in focus. So even though this is everything that I shot, I did not use all of them. Before importing them, I chose which ones I wanted. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, I'm sure some people are wondering how I actually shot these. So just real quick, these were shot on the GH5 with a 30 mil macro lens. The GH5 has a focus bracketing feature, which is really, really cool. And that's what I used here. And in the focus bracketing feature, you can say how how big of a difference distance you want between focus shots. And it, it's just a number from one to 10. It's not an actual correlation of distance or millimeters or anything. It's just it's just a number. And so it's kind of a trial and error. You got to play with it. And I don't remember what I had this set to. And then you can choose how many shots you want. Do you want 10 shots, 100 shots? You know, what do you want? I think up to 1000 or 999. So you can spread that out. So this was 40. You can see that here. Um, there we go. You can see that this was 40 pictures. You go 140, 40 photos, but I'm not going to use all of them. I used Let's go back up. Let's find, okay, so what I'm looking for is the last group, uh, the last part of the back, of the front group, here we go, that's in focus. So that's in focus, I'm gonna go down to the next photo that's still close enough to in focus. Um, yeah, I'm kinda like seeing some artifacts, some focusy stuff down there. I'm gonna say there, 87 is probably about where I wanna be. Okay, and then, um, let's see here. We're going to start not with this one because that's blurry. You can see it's not really sharp there, but I think the second one in there is, yeah, second or third one in there is pretty good. So I go basically from 58 down to, what did I say? 88? Good. I went and forgot. Um, sure. 87, 88, something like that. So that's about the range that I used. So I didn't use everything. I just used about that much of it. And that's fine. You don't have to use everything. You don't even have to use all of them. I could look at these and decide, oh, you know what? They're so close. I'm just going to use every other photo that I shot. Uh, there's no rules to this. It, essentially, I would say in general, you want to you want to have as few photos as necessary just because it takes a lot more processing power and time to do the stack. But at the same time, you could spend all kinds of time pulling out photos and trying to decide which ones will process more quickly and you could have just processed it all by that point. I think if you're just doing one of them or a couple of them, then don't worry about it too much. But if unless you're seeing weird artifacting and you find that that goes away by reducing them, but I haven't run into that yet. But if you're doing a lot of these, let's say you're shooting a catalog. Let's say that you've got a job to shoot a catalog, wedding, uh, uh, jewelry catalog, or catalog, you know, a collection for a client. You've just watched a five minute sample of a live training video. 
To see the rest of it, head to photoapps.expert slash live where you can purchase and download it or sign up as a member. Members can stream any live training video as often as they like and have access to video tips and other exclusive member bonuses. To learn more about membership, head to photoapps.expert slash members. <laughs>